Okay, let's go on then with uh, our first chapter. So we had now our first C++ program, one very simple one where we could easily see how a, a, a main function, for instance, is built up and what a, the purpose of a main function is. And then I gave you a slightly more complex example, um, which is kind of a preview of how we're going to program in the next month or so, after which it will become a little bit more complex than that. So as we've seen, um, the first thing we need to do when we always create the CPP file is we have to use our compiler to create the executable. Now we've seen basically just this step over here where we had our CPP file and by doing G++ with our CPP file and with the uh, minus O, we could uh, create our executable on this side over here. Now we'll see in the coming weeks that things are a little bit more complicated, especially when you have more files. And we will have more files later on. So for each class that we'll have, we tend to have a CPP file and also a header file. The header file we'll see later are these type of include files in which you can uh, include other people's code, for instance, or your own code that you encapsulate in such a way that you don't need to change it that often anymore. Think of it as a library. Um, and this is basically allowing you to take functions from elsewhere and use those in your program. Now there is a pre-processing routine where these two are combined into one gigantic source file, which is then being compiled into one object file. And that object file is then linked together with everything that else that needs to be done there into an executable, which then contains lots and lots of codes. So, for instance, for our example that we just had, we can look, oops, we can look at our directory here. Look how uh, big this is over here. Um, so our test CPP is a little bit bigger than our first little example that we had. It's a few hundred uh, bytes, but our executable is 13 kilobytes. Now, what is in these 13 kilobytes? It's basically lots of and lots of instructions that tell the computer and the operating system what needs to be done. We could even look at it with our nano compiler. We could just say, if you make the mistake of not adding your CPP extension, you just do nano tests, then you see that nano, the executable, is full of not uh, uh, that much readables. Um, so in this case, you, you can't read what is in there, but the machine can. It's basically lots of instructions that together form the executable. And that allow this thing to be um, to be executed in a particular operating system on a particular computer with memory, with a particular CPU uh, or multiple CPUs and so on. So this is what uh, the, the chain is, the chain of events is, and we as users just need to make sure that our source and header files are perfectly correct. In the, mean uh, in the meantime, we will see also that there is such a thing as a, a make file where we can define um, what happens in the middle, but that is kind of automatic or semi-automatic. And in the end, we get our executable, just as we had it in our example a few minutes ago. Now, functions are a way to encapsulate little pieces of code together. We already saw a function, and this was the main function. We saw that it had a name, which in this case is main, and it's always exactly the same. And your main function is the thing that gets called first. And it has a return type. So if you have a return statement, like return zero, for instance, it returns this zero as an integer back to the operating system. Now, what you can do in this main function is define particular variables like a, b, and c. You can do certain things over here, um, such as uh, display things on the terminal or ask the user for inputs, uh, calculate certain things. And this is not an exception for main only. So there are also other functions that you can define. So if you want to define your own function, you do it like this. You basically uh, put it in front of main and you say that it has a particular return type, it has a particular name, for instance, in this case, adds, and it has then two parameters, this is new, uh, two integers, x and y, and this function, when it gets called, it takes this x from here and this y from here, and it returns then the sum of x and y, and it returns these as an integer back uh, to whoever has called this particular function. And this function is called right over here, 
So here you see that we have an integer c. The c is then assigned to uh, whatever add as a function returns when a and b are given as the arguments or the parameters to this function. So what happens here when you type this whole thing in your terminal, for instance, is that um, you can enter the two numbers, a and b, then our function then adds those two and returns that as a c variable or into the c variable. And this can then be written out by this means. So the sum is, and then you uh, see here uh, what c is. This is just another example of a program um, that uh, uses, in this case, a function. So a function is not just the main function, it can be anything, and you can define your own functions with as many parameters, if any, um, and particular return types if you want to. Again, more about the return types and all the other things later. So if you don't understand some of those keywords, don't worry. Slowly we're getting the hang of it and try to follow along. So we see now that functions are statements, just like lots of other statements, um, that are executed in their order in the code. So when, um, in this case, for instance, this line uh, is uh, this line has it has its turn. So we've already executed all of these things. Then this line will execute this particular function, a function that we know exists because we define it right here. Now, when a function is called, the program branches to the beginning of it. Um, that means the, the, the program goes straight to the beginning of the function. And our function consists usually of a header and a body, where the header is the type, the integer for our add function, the name, add for our add function, and a list of parameters. In this case, our x and our y. We also have a body, which is then the list of statements that need to be executed when you call this particular function. And a function then returns when it executes the return statements. Okay. Now, we will use in all of these slides lots of particular notations, and those have a certain meaning. So I will use a notation typewriter um, with a box around it for program text. And this is usually text that you can also type in into your terminal by just trying things out. Um, Green italics are usually things uh, that are standing for parts of a program or a command. Bold blue is for terms that are being defined, that uh, we know are certain keywords. Red and italics is to emphasize our text. Just to make sure that for the next chapters, the next 12 chapters, you know what these particular um, uh, layouts mean. Right, and then what we've seen already is that we can print things into the terminal, and this could be used for debugging your output. So when we, for instance, have a program like this, again, that is something that we will use later, again, more and more, but more about that later, is when we have our function, somewhere in our function, so not in the main function, we can also do this C out, which stands actually for this STD C out, as we've seen it by now, and we can actually then um, show in the terminal what is happening where in our program. Now, this is a very sloppy way of doing debugging in your program, but for us, I think this is the easiest way for now. So we'll start with this. And the same for the main function. So this was the preparation for the main function, where we say we include this particular library, so we can use C out C and uh, STD in this case, um, although that should be end line, I think. Yes, it should have been end line, that is a mistake, I will update that in the slides, where we have our um, function. In our function, we can add debug lines. And in our main function, which does exactly the same as the program you saw before, we can, after each line, um, give a little bit of an insight what happens. So when we enter main, we say, I'm in main. When we're calling our function, we're saying, we're calling the function. When we're back in main, we say, we're back in main, etc. And when we execute this, you will see then everything printed out so you know more or less what happened and that the sequence of events actually was the one that you expected it to be. Okay, so what we've seen in this first chapter is that 
programming is more about problem solving, where a lot of thinking needs to be happening first before you start writing and coding. Um, and that the, the coding itself is a combination of going from an algorithm after the thinking phase, you, might, you should have a certain algorithm that you then formulate into a program, in this case, or in our case, a C++ program. Now, once you have this as a text file, all you have to do is call your compiler, which then makes this into a binary program that our system can deal with, and voila, we have our solution. Right, so this is it for our first chapter. After this, we'll start immediately with chapter two, where we finally look at what type of variables we have. We've seen already quite a few, like float and int, but there are many more, and what those really mean is what we're going to see in the next chapter. So, I'll see you till next time.